Hello, I'm John, I'm the Warhammer modeler, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at how I painted this Necromunda Orlock Cybermastiff. I'm going to go through the techniques that I used to paint this. They're not that complicated, but I'm going to chat about how I did it and go through those processes. I'm also going to chat about how I do my quick Necromunda bases. So I'll be painting two different things in this video. So I have a Necromunda base, it's the 25mm one, and I also have a part of a Cyber Mastiff that I've put on this little stand to help me paint it. Let's just move this guy out of the way. What you'll see with both of these, I've given them a light prime and then I've done the first part of the painting. On the base I have used Citadel Chainmail for the silver section and for the Cyber Mastiff I have used the Lead Belcher. Very similar colours, one lighter than the other. reason why I've done this is so I've let that dry fully so I can then just get straight into the painting of the rest of the item. So the first thing that I want to do, whenever I paint any objects, I always start with the lowest kind of um, section in the model. So in this case, all of the metal, which is the bones of the model, I've done that first, then it will be the skin on top of that and so on. And if there were any other details, I'd build up on top of them. So the first thing I want to do is tidy up the skin. The first time I ever put paint on a model, I don't worry about being tidy. So in this case you can see I've got silver all over the place from that lead belcher paint. So what I want to do now is put another coat of white onto there. I'm going to be using the Corax white. So what I'm looking to do, I like to paint things quite quickly so I'm not worried about going over sections. I can always redo them later on if I paint over something I don't mean to. I tend to paint to what I feel is a good gaming level first and then if I want to take it any further afterwards I can add more details, more colours and that kind of thing. So I always aim for just that kind of a level that I'd be happy with on the table and then if I want to make a more of a statement piece I'll add to it and add more detail. And it also depends, if I like the model, I might just continue to add more details and so on. So I'm not going to worry too much about every piece of this one because I just want to show the basic technique that I used, but let's just get some of that on there. So I've got gone and tidied that up now with a white coat. While I'm letting that dry, I'm going to tidy up and put the first coat of paint on the other section of the base. So for that I'm using, in this case, the Codex Grey. It can be any colour you want for these bases. I tend to use this grey or a lighter grey. I'm just going to throw the paint on here. And this is the thing with this, I'm not too worried with these about being too tidy. What I tend to do, the first block colours of paint I get onto a model, I just throw them on. I can always tidy them up later on. I may not even worry about tidying them if the kind of it adds to that finish on the model. Just a slight bit of randomness and wear seems to come through when you're kind of not too worried. So nice and quick. And now I'm just going to sit that back and let that dry. So, although this hasn't fully dried, because it's only been a very short amount of time, I can get my inks that I want to use over the top of the silver to create a bit of depth and definition. Now it varies when I start painting things like this, whether I highlight any of this, whether I do any dry brushing or so on. I might add different layers of colour to this before adding the inks, or I might add the inks and then add a little bit of colour afterwards. It varies, but I really like using inks just because of 
the um, kind of the thinness of the colour. You can build it up over um, different layers. Um, to start with, I'm going to use null oil. So all I'm going to do is over the lead belcher, the silver. I'm just going to paint this on, and I actually use quite a bit. Things always start to look nicer when you throw a lot of null oil on. Not forgetting the back. So that's the first bit there. I don't. I'm not too worried if it goes over onto the white slightly at all. But I'm just putting that in on that place. Let's do it along the spine. So this is quite nice and easy as I put that on. Now, if you put too much on, like I've just done there. We clean the paint off our brush and then we can draw out that ink and then paint it back on. So don't worry if you put too much on, you can always pull it off with the brush and then add it later on. So oh, let's not forget these little bits on the back here. Now I like working with inks quite a lot. I build it up over many different layers. So you'll see with this one that I did, the legs themselves only had the one coat of lead belcher and then the null oil on top. Then I might add a little bit more and just build up the layers in certain areas to get it darker and so on. But what I want to do now is start working on the kind of the raw skin areas around the model. And to start that I'm going to use some Bal Red or whatever equivalent red wash Citadel do now. And all I'm going to do as I load up my brush is I'm going to run along the edge of where the, um, the silver sections are. And I'm not going to worry too much about creating too much kind of in one area. I'm just going to dab it on and then the same around on the leg and I'm not worried if I go too far over the model in any place at the moment. Just bring that around here. The way that I did these, it doesn't matter if you accidentally get any ink in other places, but what I will do is I'll just put a little bit down on the edge of the leg there and some just underneath. So what we've now got is a little bit of ink built up just there. So while that ink is drying a little bit, I'm just going to have a quick look at this base, it's not quite touch dry yet, you can see the glistening there of a little bit of wet paint still, so we'll leave that to one side as we go. I'm hoping that this light will actually speed up the drying time. You'll see that the ink is still quite shiny, it's still drying, but what I want to do straight away before that's fully dry, because I want to get it to um, merge a little bit, is I'm going to use some Reekland flesh shade to add a little bit of extra depth to the colours on here. So similar to how I did before I'm going to actually just bring in that flesh shade along where I had that red ink. So the amount that I put on my brush should actually be enough to roughly go over everywhere that I've painted at the moment. So I'm just going to bring that through. So what you'll find at this stage, if you can get it in focus, is the red ink and that flesh, the edges where they've kind of joined start to become quite blurred. What I want to do is make sure 
this coat now dries thoroughly so I want to wait a little bit to let that dry. Okay so it's been a few minutes and we can see that the ink the washes are drying quite nicely on that. I'm going to leave that for a second so we can do the next step on the base. What I'm going to do now is put a very rough kind of almost too much painted dry brush using um, some of the Bestial Brown. It can be any colour you want. This one's quite nice because it's quite orange so it looks quite rust like. And I'm not looking to be tidy when I do this. I'm just wanting to get paint onto the edges and so on. So I just roughly put that in, get a bit more paint. And it doesn't matter if you put too much paint on here, you can always do different kind of coats of dry brushing. So I've got way too much there, but that doesn't matter. Because when I get the final stage, that will kind of tidy that up. So it looks quite messy at the moment, but I don't mind. This is what I'm looking for just to get this finish on here. So we'll let that dry while we go on to the next stage of the side of Mastiff. So you'll see now we've got our inks have dried all the way around the dog here. We've kind of over over painted so we've got quite a wide band around there. What I want to do now is add more white back into here. So again using one of my old dry brushes I'm going to repaint some of the Corax white onto there but I'm going to actually stipple it on with the dry brush rather than dry brush it or paint it on. So I'm just going to load a bit onto the brush, just put it onto my palette and then all I'm looking to do is just dab this in. It's actually, without realising it, I've put it on my palette and it's added a bit of the colour of that rust brown but for now I'm not going to worry about that. It's actually given quite a nice flesh colour. So for this coat I'm not going to worry too much about that because it's kind of worked quite nicely. Happy accidents. Always love a happy accident. So as I put this in, so it's actually, actually it's quite a nice colour. Quite happy with that. But you can see how that's taken off the edge of the ink. It's given a, a kind of a more blended section to it. So, what I need to do now is I need to make sure this bit really dries. Because I'll be putting more inks onto this now. So, I'm going to leave it a few minutes just to make sure that paint dries. Because I don't want this paint to bleed through any of the washes, any of the inks that I'm about to use. So we'll come back in a few minutes and this paint will be touch dry and we can get on with the next stage. Okay, it's had a little bit of time to dry. So I'm back with the Bal Red. And what I'm looking to do with this now is not as much as I did before but I want to run it along where the metallic sections meet the flesh. So, let's build that bit up on that side. Now, I really like working with inks, I think I've already said it, but it allows you to build up different tones and colours bit by bit as you work. 
And the worst case scenario, if it all goes wrong while you're painting with the inks, clean your brush and draw that ink off with your clean brush and then you'll be able to start again. So although there's not going to be a leg on the back here I'm going to paint that up as well. So what I'm looking for with this is that kind of a really raw flesh to metal section. So as I build that up slowly, so what I am going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more white to the main body section. There is, it doesn't really come out on the camera, oh it does come out on the camera, there is a line here of the ink underneath. I just want to blend that out slightly. So I'm not going to worry about the dry brush now, I'm going to use just my normal brush and back with the Corax White. I like the Corax White, it's a very heavy pigmented paint so it does allow you really good coverage of other items when you put it on. And what I'm actually doing, rather than brushing on, I'm stippling it on in a similar way to how I added it originally with the dry brush. Got to remember to keep talking in a video rather than just concentrating on painting. I'm just building that up slowly. Just blend that bit in a bit. There we go. That's better. That's more like what I'm looking for. So, at the same time now as that's drying and the red ink's drying, I'm going to get the null oil and I'm going to put another coat in certain places on the metallics again. So just around where joints are and things and where there'd be kind of heavy wear and that kind of thing. I'm just going to add a little bit more for the shading. The key thing, whenever you're painting stuff, you don't need to make it complex. It can be nice and easy. If you want to paint things complex, go for it. It's enjoy what you're doing. Don't, don't worry about what other people are doing. So that's just added a little bit more shade to those sections. So now, while that's drying, let's just move that over here for now. I'm going to go back to the next stage on the quick Necromunda base. And for that, I'm going to use, I think, my favourite Citadel shade, Agrax Earth shade. And all I'm going to do is put buckets of it on. Get a bit more on the brush. That's better. And I'm not worrying how I paint this on. I really need to get more on this brush. This is. There we go. That's what I want. There we go. So, the actual base becomes my palette as I start putting all of this earth shade on the base and although this is a kind of a really quite rough way of putting the base together just with the paint in my in my eyes I kind of see it as a nice quick method to get a base ready to put on the gaming table after I've done this and it's dried I can then add more detail to it, so I can put transfers on it, I can put hazard stripes on it, I can do all sorts. But it's a nice and quick method, 
it means that all of my Necromunda models have the same bases without having to do anything too complicated. And all I'm going to do now is let that dry. When it's dry, I paint the rims of my bases. Everyone does different colours. I like to do the rims of the bases black. So we have the black bases, but whatever colour you want. But I'm going to leave that to dry. Let's push that to one side. And, whoops, and bring this in now. So, although the null wash, the null oil hasn't fully dried yet, what I want to do is pick out a few spots of lighter colour on, on some of the metallic sections. So I'm going to use some iron breaker for this, very similar to the older chain mail, yep chain mail one, a little bit darker, but very similar. Making sure that I shake the metallics well. Metallic paints tend to have a clear base and then the particulate in there gives its metallic finish. I've done a previous video on the basics of how paints work, so if you want to check that out, have a look at my other videos. So, what I want to do now with this lighter metallic what I'm looking for is areas that look like a transitional point from the metallic to the flesh areas, so things like these little bits here there um, let's put a little bit round on the front there. So I'm not going to go too wild on that, just a few little bits to pick that out. And lastly, for the Cyber Mastiff, I'm going to use a bit of the Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to use a few little bits just to add a little bit of depth to certain areas. So underneath the leg here and I'm just going to build up a little bit on the belly just there. So while we wait for those to dry let me just bring in the Mastiff. Now things that I did on this one that I haven't done in this video so where you've got the collar that is just Rhinox hide and then Nulm oil over the top, so nice and easy to do. I may add extra details to this guy later on, but I quite like this one the way it is. If we have a look at his non-robotic foot, that section there was just built up with the Agrax Earthshade, so it's about two light coats of it. You'll see if I turn this round how the pour, you'll see it picks up a lot of details on the pads and things like that. Okay, so we've let these dry now. Let's have a look at the base first. So you can see, well, there's a little bit of it wash still drying in there. But this is how I do my bases, nice, quick and easy. From this stage, I can always add more detail and so on, but I'm really quite happy with the way that they turn out. As you can see on the Cyber Mastiff here. It doesn't take away from the model at all and it just gives you a kind of a nice rusty finish for the base. So let's have a look at the side of the Cyber Mastiff. So here we have it all fully dry. As you can see we've got the kind of the raw red flesh around where the, met the metal sections are and we've got that kind of almost albino like kind of white flesh on the rest of it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's the first painting video I've done. I hope to do quite a few more in the future. So please like and subscribe. If you've got any requests for how to paint certain things let me know in the comments and I can do my best and produce some videos of them. My name's John. I'm the Warhammer Modeler. 
stay safe.